All right, we are here in Denmark after two days hard of seminars, uh, two hard seminar days with German Shepherds on the field. One day protection and one day obedience and I had chance to see a lot of Karsten's breedings. So we are with the famous Sutherland breeder Karsten Andersen who, who is kindly come to our uh, interview, but it's very nice. and. Uh, and I want to introduce him at first. First of all, he has been breeding over uh, 40 years for German Shepherds already. And uh, your first litter was 1974, if I remember right. Something yeah, like that. I think that's that's right. Yeah. 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 When I was still in high school. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you have been uh, sold uh, puppies for all continents in the world, and uh, one famous dog from your. Breedings is the dog who did 100 points in protection 2009 in Germany and also placed on the third place in WSV. You have many Danish champions and uh, we were talking about this another day that maybe you are one of the breeders who has the most dogs in the world championships. Oh, I just checked. I have 43. 48 dogs in the world championships. That's a pretty amazing number. And the first two dogs from your breedings has been in the world championships in WSB World Championships uh, in the early 90s. Yeah, that was 1990. I think it was the second uh, WUSV uh, World Championship. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Before that, it was European Championships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, we start to talk about the German Shepherd breeding. At first, I would like to ask a little bit about the. What we were talking on another day that uh, because you have been focusing always on breeding, not so much competing and that side of the sport. So, so uh, what, uh, how you would see the dogs, the champions uh, who who are competing in the world championships and national champions? That uh, how the titles and the breeding qualities goes hand by hand. Yes. Uh... It is so that uh, the breeding qualities uh, of the dogs that are in the the, the, the world championships and the national ch uh, championships do not always correlate um, uh, with 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 their working uh, with the points they make in the in in, uh, in, in the championships. So uh, that is a bit of a challenge. But that is also what I as a breeder find really fascinating about breeding that you have to analyze the quality of the dogs and look not only at the points they make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, if you talk about what has been your favorite German Shepherd of all, all time, can you name one? What has been like your favorite dog? Doesn't have to be champion, but generally just a dog. Yeah, uh, first of all, my favorite personal dog was the first dog that I had when I started breeding seriously because uh, in the beginning, uh, well, I didn't know anything about breeding, but I just wanted to breed. And that was, uh, as you mentioned before, I started in 74. And in 74, you did not really have a division in show line breeding and working line breeding. so. I was not really conscious at that moment of the, 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 the different qualities of the lines and at that time the qualities were not so pronounced as they are now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I had been uh, studying at universities for quite a number of years and I decided I wanted to really make a go at trying to breed German Shepherds. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I put a an advert into the SV magazine and uh, oh. I had a response from the owner of the Cartago kennel that he would have one or two females to sell. And uh, that was my lucky start in the breeding of German Shepherds because I got the female uh, Asra from Stoppenberger land. And to me that was uh, like a revelation. Could a dog be as good as she was. I had never experienced a dog of that quality. Mm -hmm. So that was the first sort of eye-opener for me. Then a dog that later on uh, really uh, impressed me was Oka from Katago. 
and I think he was world champion in 95 as far as I remember. And then a dog recently that I think is a really, really great dog is Bolle from Yanaka. Yeah. 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 So that's your recent favorite dogs. Yeah. And uh, what is, can you see some young dogs now? What are kind of your favorite dogs? Like some favorite up and coming young males or females? Yes. Uh, well, 10 years after, 10 years later, we'll all be much wiser. Yes. Uh, but uh, to me, uh, there is, or there are a couple of dogs that I find extremely interesting. They are sons of the dog Fegu from Österfeld. Mm -hmm. One is called Extreme from Eisner Kreutz, and uh, are also a, a few other of his sons. Uh, this dog, Fegu from Österfeld, well, like every 10 years, you see a dog. Wow, what a dog! Mm -hmm. And uh, I have um, really great expectations for, for, for some of his dogs. Like, for example, this extreme from Eisner Kreuz, because his mother line is uh, so re really great. So, uh, um, and he also attracts a lot of attention from, uh, from, from breeders. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, he has not competed yet uh, on a national level, but uh, let's see, he's a great dog. Okay, well, that's nice to hear. I do have all, follow follow that dog for sure. Mm -hmm. What what are the most important qualities in German Shepherd? Well, uh, we are talking about uh, the working abilities, the working qualities, and uh, uh, today a lot of people are. Uh, put a lot of interest in, um, how can I put it, um, special qualities, like the jumping of the dog, because they do not want the dog... You mean jumping jump, the attack or uh, uh, jumping no, over the hurdle? Uh, jumping over the hurdle, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, they do not, because the dog lose points, and uh, the grip is also a quality that many people put a lot of attention mm -hmm. to. Uh, to me, uh, the, what, what is extremely important to me is the overall quality of the dog. Uh, that uh, uh, the dog, first of all, uh, what to me is so important is the nervous system. That the dog is never afraid, is never nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the number one point for me. Yeah, so the dog is like stable. Stable mm -hmm. and clear in the head. Uh, and what I see today a lot is that you have many nervous, stress-like, hectic dogs yeah. and uh, to me they are no good. Uh, yeah. That is really a problem, big problem. And why is it? Uh, is it because maybe, of, maybe because of obedience qualities? What the yeah, people uh, yes, the yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Because what, what is asked for today is a lot of speed and obedience mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it's, well, it's so difficult to have that quality and at the same time to have a dog that is really good and strong in protection. Yeah, 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 I can see that for sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how you see the breeding nowadays in the German Shepherd? What, what's our like, biggest mistake? So you already said about that say, there's a dog who are hectic and nervous. Is that kind of the biggest mistake in German Shepherd breeding at the moment? Like they are doing more like kind of like obedience dog, mm -hmm. active dogs who are maybe a little bit nervous but not so strong and stable in the protection. Is that, that your opinion about that, that it's kind of the biggest mistake in the breeding at the moment? Yes, I do think that is the biggest mistake at the moment, yes. Yeah. Uh, because of the judging, uh, a number of, of problems occur also in protection. And uh, well, I was close to giving up breeding like five, ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, because uh, it seemed to me that all the top handlers did not want to have strong dogs. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have dogs that were not strong, that were easy to handle. Yeah. Uh, but luckily, over the last five years, we have had quite a number of really, really strong dogs at the top. So mm -hmm. people, some people have showed that it is actually possible to have a really strong dog and win competitions. Yeah. I could mention a few dogs that have really uh, changed the game, like uh, Bolly Yanaka, 
Henrik from Wolfsheim, Buchan from Perot. Uh, they are really strong dogs, mm -hmm. and that has been a, a, a really a step in the right direction that people see that these really strong dogs can win competitions. Yeah, that they are trainable. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good to hear. Uh, what are the main qualities for you in the breeding female? Oh, uh, well, yeah, that's a good question. Because, well, sometimes I think about it in the way that what we as breeders do, if we do the right thing, is that we in our breeding of course, you need, if, if you want to be a good breeder, you need to have your own female line because uh, then you will know everything about the female line. Yeah. And as a breeder, if you want to make good results, it is absolutely necessary that you know everything about your line. So, the way I see it, uh, what the breeder needs to do is to select in oh. his lines uh, from the letters and so on the females that are 100% clear in the head and have good nerves mm -hmm. because then they will go with all the strong males and then you see also uh, that if you have some of the strong males some of them are not so uh, genetically so good when it comes to nerves so a lot of people say I'll just bring my female to this very strong male and I'll produce very good dogs mm -hmm. that is will not happen because if the female is not uh, does not have a, a sound nervous system they will have problems it's 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 a question of eliminating bad nervous things in your female line yeah then you will be able to breed to any kind of male yeah that 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 makes sense for sure the female line is the main thing mm -hmm. uh, what about the male so you said already, like now you are happy about the here uh, to see that there is some males winning the competition who who are in your opinion strong dogs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what is the main thing when you when you are uh, looking for the male? Well, what I'm looking at in the male is uh, the, again the overall uh, impression of the dog, not any special quality. Uh, always when I look at a male or when I look at a female for that matter the kind of dog that I look for is the dog that when it comes into the blind it uh, shows that it wants to dominate the helper mm -hmm. and can do it yeah especially the guarding phase yeah, yeah. okay yeah. yeah so what to me is uh, well the mental uh, or, or the psychological uh, fighting with the helper to me is a lot more important than the physical uh, fighting with the helper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What qualities the puppies? You have seen all, lots of puppies in the uh, last 40 years. So, uh, so what qualities in the puppies kind of makes you excited? But uh, like, can you make the differences between the leaders and some leaders? You see something exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, is there some qualities in the puppies that makes you a little bit? <laughs> Well, uh, with 40 years of experience, um, I'm sorry, I need to say that it is so difficult to see qualities in pups. Mm -hmm. um, that sometimes you have a litter, you are not really satisfied with the pups. Uh, they are not active and uh, they are, well, becomes afraid sometimes. and. Mm -hmm. uh, at other times you have a litter that looks like, well, they're going to be champions, all of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, then two years later, it's the complete opposite. So, okay. So yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, but it is so difficult to, to, to look for qualities in, yeah. in pups. One thing, uh, often people ask me for advice on picking the pup from a litter. Yeah. And uh, to me, it seems like all all handlers want to have the most active, dominating pup in a litter. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not what I do, uh, because uh, to me, what, what is much more important, uh, or what I prefer, is the the more stable pup okay. uh, that is not so active. Because in many cases, you see those pups that fight a lot with the others, are really the insecure ones. So the the pup that does not need to fight with the others, 
that mends its own business and uh, uh, seems to be on top of the situation. That's the kind of pup that I prefer. The dog who wants to dominate everybody all the time, maybe it's the insecurity, yeah, yeah it okay. makes sense. Yeah. Uh, what health tests for you are the priority or what should be the priority in the breeding? Uh, uh, health? Yeah, health tests. Breathing. Breathing is a dirty business. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what you do as a breeder, you will always do something wrong. Yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, I think to most uh, breeders, it, uh, they are not really aware of all the risks they, they take when making a breeding. Yeah. They will, you may risk, uh, well, having dogs that do not bite, you may risk having dogs that are very, uh, well, lazy and obedient, you may risk have dogs that have uh, hip dysplasia, you may risk have dogs that are um, have very bad body structure, you may risk everything. Mm -hmm. So, to me, it's a question of uh, calculating the risks. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is, to me, always the most important thing is that uh, the pups have good working quality. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to sell to top handlers or good handlers, what what good is it that they have excellent tips if they cannot work? Yeah, there's no the, then the breeding doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, but about the health, of course, everybody we want all to have uh, good with uh, uh, dogs that do not have problems with the hips, that do not have problems with the elbows. Elbows is the worst thing. Because if a dog has a, a, a bad problem with, with the elbow, well, it will have to be put to sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, uh, of the hip dysplasia, luckily it is not so uh, such a big problem anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do think that the German Shepherd has really progressed a lot in, in hip dysplasia. When I started breathing, uh, you heard of whole litters being put to sleep because they had hip dysplasia. Really? Mm. Uh, now, uh, well, it is one out of 100 dogs that has a, a, a problem with the uh, hips. So the, the, this health x-rays and yeah, this yeah. thing has helped a lot? Yes, it yeah. has, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, then other health issues are... Well, one thing that to me is a health issue is the size of the dogs. Mm -hmm. Because we have a really bad tendency in the German Shepherd that the dogs become too big. Yeah. First, it started with the show line dogs, they became bigger and bigger and bigger. And now I do think that we need to be very much aware in the working line dogs that they do not have the same problem because I do see the tendencies. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, what about you? Talk about a lot of the uh, German Shepherd names and uh, even from the history. I don't know. I don't know all the German Shepherds from the history, but you have a lot of knowledge about it. So, what are your uh, line breeding policies generally? I I would say, and that's what I always say when doing seminars and breeding, that the good old principle of do making. A uh, three, four inbreeding is still the best to me. Mm -hmm. uh, today, people talk a lot about outbreeding and inbreeding. Inbreeding being bad, outbreeding being good. Yeah. But if you want the race, the German Shepherd race, to to become better, you cannot do it by outbreeding. We want if we want to have the good qualities uh, become solidified in the dogs and if you do outbreeding so that you have no uh, genetic connections at all between the male and the female you will not know what you're breeding mm -hmm. so uh, i might be politically a bit out of step with what is uh, the fashion at the moment yeah but it seems to me that if you do outbreeding you will not know anything about what you're breeding yeah. Uh, so, what I always give as uh, 
a good piece of advice to a breeder that wants to start breeding and, and become uh, uh, do good breeding is to basically stick to three, four lines in his breeding because then he knows what he is doing. Yeah. Uh, do you have any qu qualifier for the handler? Are you looking something uh, in the handlers when you sell your puppies <laughs> generally like? Uh, uh, what to me is important is enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. That they really burn to learn to, to handle dogs. Because, um, well, it's, uh, you need to put a lot of energy into it if you want to become a handler. Mm -hmm. or, or be a good handler. Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, and uh, one thing that, is, uh, well, that, that always strikes me is that um, talking about handlers, uh, to me it seems that many handlers has a span of like 10 years in dog sport. And then they stop. Okay. And why do they stop? Because they do not learn something new. Mm -hmm. uh, the quality of training is developing so fast, so quickly at the moment that you need to be prepared to learn something new all the time. Oh, for sure. If you want to survive mm -hmm. in the sport. Yeah, it's a competition, so. Yeah. If you want to compete against some uh, other handlers, then you have to all the time update your information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so you said already about the advice on choosing puppy that you don't really like. You don't have that kind of like. Uh, no, but, but uh, you you well, want well, the, you well, want well, the well, you want the calmer and stable dog. That's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. your advice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but to well. I would say the way that better to have the last pick in a good litter to have than to have the first pick in a bad litter, mm -hmm. because to me, basically all the pups in a litter are the same. Yeah. And often, as a breeder, I would want to have a female from a litter to continue my breeding. Yeah. And uh, almost all the time, I've done it the way that if there were, for example, four females in the litter. Well, those who wanted females could have pick number one, two, and three. I would take number four. It doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and have you ever done any kind of puppy testing? No, I don't yeah. do it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, well, in the good old days when I started breeding, uh, there were some people who uh, said they, they would offer to, 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 to do some uh, puppy testing for me and uh, I was sort of naive at the time and okay, if you want to do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I saw was that uh, the puppy testing was no good. The, yeah. 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 Uh, what are the most important structural, structural qualities in German Shepherd for you, you said already like the people are breeding sometimes like a really big dogs and mm. you don't see that that's a good thing, but is there any structural qualities what you prefer when you are breeding, breeding German Shepherds? Like how they look, how they okay. are moving or... Uh, or so, okay, yeah. structure. Yes, yeah, yeah, structure, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm English. Yeah, uh, what, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what I uh, what to me is important is that they um, that they are not too big that their agility is good that they know how to uh, to uh, run and how to jump and so on yeah that is uh, extremely important to me yeah yeah you just look generally like yeah. how they move around yeah. and yeah. how yeah. they jump the obstacle yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes sense how you would describe your breedings like what is the strength of the dog in your breedings comparing to generally to German shepherds like what is the strength in your breedings oh well yeah, it's like I touched upon earlier that uh, uh, the nervous system is to me so important that yeah. the, the dogs uh, I only want to breed uh, dogs that are have a completely clear head and uh, always are on top of the situation are never frustrated and afraid that is to me uh, what is most important. Yeah, yeah, and you see that that's the kind of in your dogs like they are more stable yeah. and not so nervous dogs than like if you talk about the average German Shepherd. Yes, yeah. and, and if, if we talk about uh, breeding really, really strong dogs, which are the kind of dogs that we all want, yeah, uh, it's not possible 
to do that without having uh, very, very stable nerves. Because mm -hmm. the dogs that are unstable in their nerves will have problems uh, and they will not be able to uh, have their instincts. Well, we, if we talk about a strong dog, it needs to have a very pronounced aggression, very pronounced prey and uh, pronounced courage and so on. It will not be able to let these instincts come into full bloom if the nervous system is not perfect. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. Uh, do you test the breeding dog somehow? When you when you have a when you find a like a dog what you want to use for breeding, do you have some kind of test for it? Like how you will like no, um, I don't. I, I look at the uh, at, at the for example the males that I might consider using. I, I see what they do in competitions and uh, uh, I do like, and that is uh, that is really important. Uh, I know people all over the world. So mm -hmm. if there is a new and interesting dog, yeah. they would, some insider in the same e uh, area would probably be able to give me some insider information yeah, on so the dog. Yeah, ask around a little yeah, bit. I yeah, ask around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that makes sense. We had a little interesting discussion earlier about like, like you were saying about this, that the that some working land breeders, for example, they are blaming the working uh, the, the show land breeders, yeah. like that the the, the the problems in the working land breeders, and you had a pretty good opinion about it, like that 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 how you see like a show land German Shepherd and working land German Shepherd generally on the. Yeah, it is a thing that has happened all not only in German Shepherds but also in a number of other dogs that uh, you have this division in show line and, mm -hmm. and working dog. Um, and uh, it was something that happened around 1980 uh, that uh, the uh, division became well so pronounced that, uh, and, and, and the uh, it is being uh, even more pronounced every year and every decade. So. Uh, that's it. The reason for that is that people today want to compete and to compete at a higher level. And mm -hmm. if you want to compete in shows, you will choose the dogs that are good um, with structure. Yeah. And uh, and they come from from various lines. And if you want to compete in 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 uh, IPO or ITP, you would want dogs that have good, good qualities for do that for doing that. And they come from certain lines. So that's the way it is. But if we say 1980 is uh, around the time when this thing happened, that uh, the, the division, line, the, the, yeah, the division line kind of yeah, separated yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. Yeah. then uh, if we as uh, working dog line breeders have had almost 40 years to breed the perfect dog and do not do it, mm -hmm. well, how can that be to blame the, the uh, how can we blame the show line uh, breeders for, for being responsible for that? I don't see the point in it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And we had the conversation also about like, uh, what it was about, yeah. about this show thing. Ah, you said something about this, like the difference in the breeding the show line dogs, for example, you just you can use the champion, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's yeah, important. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in a showline dog, you can use the champion, and you can actually breed those uh, like uh, qualities, like how you say, like st structural qualities. Yeah. But with the working line dog, that's a little more complicated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, w I would like to elaborate a bit on that uh, mm -hmm. because, um, well. In the show line uh, dogs, you have in every year in Germany uh, the um, uh, Siegerschau, where the uh, show line dogs compete, and uh, you have dogs from all over the world coming there and competing. Uh, mostly, of course, they are German dogs. Uh, and then you have a special class, to, for example, the first seven dogs uh, will have a special title VA. Mm -hmm. And those are the dogs that are recommended uh, specifically for breeding. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you will have both for males and for females. This you do not have uh, for, for, for working line dogs. 
uh, because uh, our test of world championship, uh, well, what is that? Is that something to do with breeding? No, it's a competition. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the good old days in the 90s, uh, the um, head of the uh, of the SV um, uh, working um, department, uh, Hans Wiedenauer, he introduced a whole new way of thinking about this because he said, in the German Championship, we want well the top uh, seven, for example, or top six, to be the dogs that we recommend specifically for breeding because they have special qualities yeah uh, so before that you would have like half of the participants in the in, in, in the German championships having excellent yeah and you would have now only six or seven dwarfs that had excellent yeah um, and he also wanted the judges to analyze what they saw. Uh, in in uh, in in the IPO and to, to give the points accordingly to mm -hmm. analyze uh, not only uh, the training but also the quality of the dog. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, judging like two different ways that you judge the quality and then you judge the technique. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that was. Uh, a very good initiative, very good idea, uh, way of thinking of it, but uh, unfortunately uh, we have gone back now to the judging being uh, only technical. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a step backward, I think. Oh yeah, 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 for sure we should, I agree 100% that we should look the quality of the dog and see the power in the work. Yeah. It's very important. But then you also have to admit that to many judges, it would be quite difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I do not know if you need to blame the judges too much because uh, the training has developed so incredibly that uh, even to some people who would consider themselves experts, it is difficult to see what is training and what is called a dog quality. Yeah. Yeah, the, with the good training techniques and the good dog reading, you can cover some mistakes what yeah, the dog yeah, has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And qualities. Yeah. Good. That was excellent interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for uh, letting me to be at your house once again, and and and, and we will see in the future again. And thank you so much for your excellent seminar. Thank you. Okay.